Hey guys, so here is the gear for today. We have the Samoog Taj handle with the Samoog Owners Club bore brush. And he's been soaking for a few minutes. We'll get him back in the water. The WR2 from Wolfman. And this is the 85 gap. I have used it with the old Nasset before. I uh, don't think it did very well at this age, but I've got it on hand. Let's try it again. And this is the uh, 369th shave with this blade. And we'll be using Dark Fall from Declaration Grooming. And this is the Milk Steak base, which is very nice. The scent on this is just so crazy good. Kind of the dankness, the, a little bit of tobacco, just uh, very rich flavors here. And I use the word flavors intentionally because they're really more like flavors than scents because it's just so rich. I, uh, I, it's probably too rich for me to wear a cologne, but no, you know what? I've got the ED, EDP um, and I, I can wear that for several hours. So... Perfect. <laughs> so here's the uh, here's how the WR2 looks all disassembled and stuff. And so here is the Nasset with little signature dots there to indicate that it's the uh, same blade that I'm using. This is the brushed stainless steel version. You don't see a whole lot of brushed examples online or on pictures and things like that. Um, as I was researching, it was kind of difficult to find uh, how it looked. Uh, as this is the one Wolfman that I actually put my name on the list and got in line, waited several months, and eventually it came to me. And uh, and I'm very glad that it did. And I'm very glad that I chose the brushed finish. Uh, I really like the way it looks a lot. Okay, yesterday was. The first time I was resuming this NASA blade after quite a, a several month hiatus, long hiatus there with it. And I used a, a carve with an A plate, solid bar, and it did not do very well. It was comfortable enough, but it didn't give me a very good close shave in my trouble spot area at all. So let's see how this razor does, maybe a little bit better. With the milk steak, um, I am going to load for 25 seconds. Oh, and five was right there. So see, I can go right to 30, but it went to six before I could jump into it. So we'll go to 31 to get a 25 second load. I can't remember if that's right for, for the milk steak or not. So we'll just do the 25 instead of 20 or 15 and that is 25 seconds of loading I'm kind of going to rake the excess into the lather bowl just in case I need it in case it helps me threw some water on my face to begin the softening of the beard I'm using a board today to celebrate my my friend Seth, uh, he's a frequent commenter uh, for a while now, and it's been uh, enjoyable getting to know him and uh, walking through part of his shaving journey with him. He just got his first bore brush, and it is a Samoog. And his first bore is actually the same as my first bore. I got the 830 as well uh, several, years, uh, several years ago. It took about 14 uses to before it became comfortable to use and stopped eating lather. I did not use any kind of shortcut method on it, and that's how long it took. Well, he uh, took a different route, and he, uh, I just recently read, oh man, I bet this is going to generate a bunch of lather. I read that he used uh, some, some different methods available. He did some soaking, you know, to, to impregnate the, uh, the 
the fibers, the bristles with water, and then dried them with a hair, a hair dryer. And that sudden drying uh, helps those tips to split uh, very quickly. And then I think he said he also, uh, as the third part of this process, he would work it on a towel, you know, kind of agitate the brush. And then I don't know uh, if he uh, repeated the process a few times, but he said that uh, the, many of the tips had split, and so he is very happy with uh, the purchase. And uh, the thing is, um, I usually either just use the brush or do something a lot more mild than what he did, but there's room for everybody. And that bore is not all that expensive, and so if, if all of a sudden he looks at the tips and many of them have broken or, or he doesn't like the way it broke in, then just buy another one. They're like 15 bucks or something like that. Um, and, uh, uh, and so, and that, that is a nice grade of bristle that the 830 has. It's, um, their premium grade bristle. It's the same knot as the 1305. And I enjoy the 1305 quite a bit. So I think that's a great choice for him to get started with bore brushes because of the quality of the bristles and the, the softness of the brush, the nice bloom and things like that. So it'll be different, you know, when you try a new type of brush, you can't expect it to, you know, be as the same as other types, you know. And uh, so I, I'm looking forward to watching him experience that one. scent is just so good. Pretty elastic. Still holding together though. We'll add a little bit more I think with milk steak, I, I, man, see, was in too much of a hurry. I had too much stuff going on tonight. I couldn't consult my, my notes. I've put quite a bit of water in here, but I think that's because I ended up loading quite a bit of soap on the brush. That 830 brush has the, uh, the smaller uh, acrylic handle or lucite or you know polymer, I don't know, I think it's acrylic. And so it's going to last a nice long time uh, as opposed to the wooden handles. Um, but then the, uh, and it's great for face latherers. If you use a bowl a lot, that handle might end up to be a little on the short side. If you like this type of uh, shape of handle, then what you can do. Uh, but you like that same bore knot as the 830 from Samogue, then, and here's the shape, the Samogue kind of signature handle shape, then get the 1305. It's this same handle shape, and uh, it is wooden, and so that's why it's, y y we say it doesn't quite last as long as the acrylic. But it's kind of enameled and painted, and so you don't want to soak that part of it because that'll swell up and crack the paint. I think we've got a good lather here. This brush is one that I'm, this is kind of my leader bore brush where I'm, this is the one I'm trying to put a bunch of uses on to, to get him to a happy place instead of waiting for all the others to catch up to him. I mean, instead of holding him back to, with the other bores that I have. So I, I don't think he's at 60 yet, but I think he might be pretty close. All right. Got my face wet again, ready to go. And 
nice easy splay on this brush. The tips, some of them have split, especially the ones on the corners, but, but a lot of them have not. And so you do feel a little bit of a wiriness to it, or sometimes I like to call it ropiness. But it's not scratching or scritching or, you know, prickly or anything like that. That's just something that's going to take a little bit of time to get those tips to split. Unless you want to use an accelerator technique like, like Seth did. So I think I've equalized the lather here. And since we've got a bunch gathering right here at the goatee, then we can probably, probably add some water if I wanted to. I want to work it into the skin here, give it time to kind of soak in, be able to protect my skin. And this one specifically built with moisturizers and butters and oils and that kind of thing. So if, if this brush, if this blade is a little abusive, this is a soak that can help with that. It's not one that's required for me. I have oily skin. And so I can pretty much, I have the, I'm blessed to have the flexibility of being able to use pretty much any soap I want, even ones that are drying, kind of caustic, you know, the old school kind. And you can even see the bend in the blade right there where I dropped it a while back. I started using this blade back in 2018, I think, in August. All right, and uh, yeah, I think I, I could add a little bit of water, but you know what, it's probably just right. Let's go, let's go for it and see how this 85 Gap Wolfman works with the Nasset. During the Nasset's life, I've had different points where Certain razors handled it the best. There was a period where my Gillette Sheraton was the ace. I think that was maybe from the use number 70 up to well past 100. There was a time when... Uh, my fat boy, and that was up in the 300 range, I think. Time when my, I was so glad to be able to use my Timeless 68 open comb quite a bit. Maybe from the 200s to 300s, perhaps. Maybe from 150 to 250 or something like that. That is a, for my skin, a very aggressive razor. But when I put that smoothed out NASA in it, I was actually able to use it. That's the way it goes with the smoothed out blades. All right, second pass. Got a good rinse there. Water out of the goatee. Woodiness in this scent as well. love to get a hold of some marshlands. That was kind of related to Dark Fall. But it's it's uh, been discontinued, I think. I think it might have even been back when it was L&L &L grooming instead of decoration. And we'll do a cross grain now. It's definitely not cutting off as much stubble in that first pass as a young version of itself.
the soap is good and smelling as good as dark fog. I don't mind if doing, you know, if I wanted to, six passes, you know, I wouldn't mind it. It's so good. Just a little bit of light tugginess. Nothing painful. Still wonderful residual slickness there. We'll do another cross grain for the third pass. With as much stubble as I felt just now, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a four pass shave. And maybe a touch up after that. Plenty of lather to do it. Two days, two days ago, I shaved with a, what I'm now have, finding out, a pretty aggressive commissory style shave at the Artist Club with the replaceable blades. And I got a, I cut my mole right here really well. It was bleeding. And I also gave myself kind of an abrasion up here, kind of with the side of the blade. Uh, because my blade was at too steep of an angle. And I can still feel that one uh, just during the day if I, I, I touch it every once in a while and I can, I can really feel it. It'll take a bit to heal up. But I am shaving just right over those areas right now. And as you can see, it's not opening up anything, at least so far. Love to get to 400. I don't feel like I need to get to 900 or something like that, you know. But 400's a nice. A nice number. I'm glad I got to 365. That's a neat little landmark, you know. Now, to make sure I get my neck well on this fourth pass, I'm going to focus on tighter skin. And uh, it's possible that in my months of shaving now with nice newer blades, uh, blades less than 15 uses, I don't need to be quite as worrisome, quite as diligent in getting properly taut skin. But that may be very important if I want this NASA to give me a close shave. So let's try that on this pass. And a little splash of water. Who knows, this blade, I wonder if it could have settled somehow over time, you know, since it's, it was unused for a while. Something could have happened to it that just age. Where it might just kind of slow down a lot quicker, I don't know. Or maybe I just haven't found the right razor for it. My, it might have changed favorite razors because I was using the carve with it, but I can't remember which plate it was. Maybe it was the B or C instead of the A. And it was doing a good job. All right, so here's the fourth pass, I think. And so let us uh, see what we can do. I am, as I'm doing the rinses, I'm feeling less and less stubble stay on my face. And you can see I'm taking a slight slanted motion there. And with the milk steak, I also can do all this repetitive work. And hey, if you want to buff an area, you got some stuff right there. Go backwards like that. You can reapply. Kind of just really get it 
and this is a very nice sensation very normal razor type uh, sensation it's not you know scrapey or anything like that at all Again, on this other side, taking that kind of upward slant. Got to be careful because if I pivot my head too much like that, all of a sudden I'm doing that slicing motion and you can get a good cut that way. So better to be slow than careless in this type of maneuver. I'm not going to start out down here with the slant quite yet. Might do a slant the other way. I don't know. It's just kind of what I like to do is just feel out the area. Shave it for a second. See how the hairs are feeling. Does it start out? Sounding like there's a good bit of cutting action and then it reduces meaning that I'm being effective at cutting or see it seems like that's what's going on If so then I can move on or Relax a little bit and I work it casually. If that sound doesn't change, then maybe I'm not cutting. And so then maybe I change my angle. Maybe I come at that same area from a different approach, from a different angle, maybe here or here or here. Maybe I change my handle angle this way. Maybe I change the tilt of my razor like that. All right, there we go. That's four passes, and that last one contained quite a bit of buffing. I forgot to focus as much on the stretching, uh, especially over here. I think I did end up doing it a little bit over here. Oh, you know, that is a much better shave than yesterday, I think. I think maybe the stretching was the key. So now, since I don't really feel like laying down another bit, I can just get a little bit of hand lather like that. Always keeping a light touch. The light touch may help to give me a nice long blade life. If there's less abrasion, less wear on the blade. I'm going fast, but it's because I'm used to these kind of strokes and because I'm also going very lightly. I don't believe if you look at my skin while I'm doing that pass right there, I don't believe you can see my skin flex under the pressure of the razor. And that's the way I want it. I want it to just dance on top to, yes, make contact, but only just. It's my style, at least. There we go. That's a better shave than yesterday. Um, I'm going to try my fat boy next because we've got some aggression that we can tweak up on that one. This is a one of the mildest WR2s you're going to see. And uh, in this case, one that's a little more aggressive might be more helpful. So, uh, but, uh, and I do have some length on, on some tips, but I think just about any job I'll be able to walk in and not have anybody you know, think that I had didn't have a great shave that morning. So that's kind of my criteria. Uh, and I and I don't have any tenderness. See, that's when you know your ten your technique is solid. When I go over this area, 
trouble spot area right here so many times and still I don't walk away with a lot of tenderness because of that light touch, because of that good slick lather. There we go. That's what we want. Now even that with the four passes, four and a half kind of, we still have probably three passes here. And so I did not need to load for 25 seconds. Now the elasticity here is terrific. Look at that. That is good stuff. Good. Good stuff. Dark fall. Oh man. There are some scents that caused me to do that. Dark fall, Admiral. You know, they're just my faves. And uh, and they just they hit me in just the right way. And it's really more of an experience, you know, an upper tier experience. Uh, I don't know, you know, it just is. And I think maybe that's why we do what we do with this shaving hobby, looking for that. How much water did I use? I think quite a bit. Looks like over, yeah, looks like about 27, 27 milliliters of water. And that uh, is a little over five teaspoons. Now I'm about to go to bed and so I don't need to really savor the dark fall and uh, by so I don't need to use an unscented product uh, and I've got this executive man from Sterling that's going to expire I've had it for a few years now it's going to expire eventually and I just want to use it before it does it's starting to get a little milky meet its want it to meet its shaving destiny Most aftershave products I do not get by buying them specifically. I often buy boxes of products because people just don't want to sell stuff individually. And so I will end up with some aftershaves because of that, right? And that's kind of what I work, work out of. Every once in a while I will buy one specifically um, if it just really looks like a product I like. Or if I've tried the soap and I like it so much that I do buy the aftershave product as well. But I've got so many balms here that I need to use up before they go bad. I, I often just uh, uh, hold off on aftershave purchases. All right. Very good. Well, the brush did great. Um, uh, nice soft tips, but not super soft. Um, actually, no, they are very soft. It's just that you do feel a little bit of, of kind of the, the wiriness of it. And this lather definitely puts it in its best light. But even with a bad lather, this isn't going to be uh, prickly at all. Very soft and nice. It just takes the Simogs a while for the tips to split if you just kind of use it. And, uh, but you will be, I'll be able to watch it grow. And uh, over the over the coming months and years, it'll be fun to see. And just nice, easy splay. Like this is just good stuff right here. But I do feel kind of the the ropiness of the shafts, you know, when I do that. Um, and so it's a different feeling. You got those the synthetics with the ultra softness that they're able to achieve because of the the man-made nature of the bristles. You've got the uh, badgers with just tons of dense hair uh, and soft, sometimes super soft, overly soft tips because of the uh, spongy effect of the gelling when sometimes they do a, a gel type tip. The uh, uh, silver tips have really soft tips, but then they have more flop, whereas this one kind of has more medium backbone. And so it's, it's neat. Uh, each one of them kind of offers different features and different things to look forward to. Now, I keep traveling with my Simog, and when I put it in the tubes, that brings the bristles together. And so I don't often see the bloom when it's, if you were just to leave it on your desk or uh, in, a, in, in the bathroom or in a cabinet or something, then it would keep the bloom and you'd see it before the shave. But uh, so often I'm traveling and putting uh, 
um, between houses and uh, and so the hairs get narrowed down almost looking like a new brush but after a good towel strop you can see that we are that telltale sign of a, a big old bloom from the smoke owners club and yes we we are able to see some tips splitting and obviously that's going to keep on happening as as we keep using the brush and uh, sometimes i have seen some tips split into five different tips and that's why i choose to do the kinds of break-ins that i do where i i try i, I believe that i'm being a very casual break-in person to make sure those splits happen in just the most stable way possible uh, so that i can get a lot on each fiber that's, that's my goal and that's i'm just making educated guesses with how to achieve it it's neat to see so many tips nice and split i think they start to split it seems like they're splitting on the outside first and then gradually you know moving in uh, very slowly and so my my assumption is that once you get the center part to split then you're you're home free right um but uh, but well I, that's just a, another educated guess The uh, executive man is working nicely with the dark fall. Oh, that! Oh, they're blending together really well. The dark fall adds some nice dankness and and richness to the the executive man or the Creed Aventus scent. Boy, if you were to combine both of those two, that might be just an amazing at least for my personal tastes, that might be just an amazing profile. I might have to figure out how to do that. Like half a scoop out of the tub of what I have here and then half a scoop out of an executive man tub. Who knows? Who knows? All right, guys. Um, good shave. Uh, face feels great. I don't feel any uh, tenderness at all. I don't feel any... Um, Don't see any redness or anything it's just a nice smooth blade and i am a happy camper so we'll uh, see you tomorrow for use number 370 and then 30 that's just 30 more so we are on on pace to end before the uh, the end of the lather games next month that's something i need to do this weekend as well as plan my uh start working on my lather games plan all right, man, oh, every, every once in a while I'm moving around the bathroom and all of a sudden the, the, a, a waft of that dark fall, it, it just hits you. And so when you're in a, a, a cloud of a scent that you really enjoy, then even the cleanup becomes a fun experience as your nose comes in and out of certain parts of it. You know, it's pretty cool. I was thinking about doing live shaves for the whole month of, june for the lather games but i don't think i'll be able to um do very many because i you have to have a thousand subscribers to do a live from your phone which is what i use normally um, when i have done live before i've used my chromebook and so uh, if i'm here i don't have a place to put the chromebook if i'm at my other place then um i uh, can use the Chromebook, so we'll see. We'll see what we can do about that. But I thought that might be neat. Um, people could talk about the lather games, that sort of thing. I used that Artist Club blade recently in the uh, Kamasori style razor. It gave me the cuts. I did find my Feather and Proline, uh, which are Schick blades, um, today, and so that's great. Um, in a couple days when I get back to where that razor is, I'll be able to try, uh, try that again. So looking forward to that in, um, a couple of shaves and we're good. My face is happy and, uh, my nose is happy from all these good smells. Um, I hope this has been something good for you to help you out. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves and we'll look forward to next time and maybe a fat boy to, uh, where we can really dial up some aggression on this blade and. See if we get a quicker efficiency, a uh, quicker close cut with this old massive blade. All right, you guys, take care. Good night.